Controversial subjects with the facts can be tense, but we are a sub science here to make things make sense. So, (laughs) (laughs) I like reading these articles about cell phone addiction about cell phone addiction has like completely blown my mind and like i honestly like i hope it's not one of those annoying things where i've like been reading them for a week and i'm like my life's changed and <laughs> right. i'm gonna stop reading them and i'm, I'm gonna go back but it's crazy well it feels <laughs> like something that's sort of intuitive and obviously we'll get into the science of different takes and perspectives and research on cell phone use but i think people sort of know intuitively more and more it's become collective knowledge and even collective conversation that cell phones are bad for us even, yeah, even if you don't know the research say i think most people are like i yeah. i don't want to use my phone as much as i do i remember <laughs> the first time i went on the internet on my phone and yeah you do I, I, I do and if you're a gen z and you heard that you're like grandpa <laughs> you know what <laughs> records do you even D. know what that is <laughs> If you're of age. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, like Gen Z. Okay. So, yes. Okay. So it was a Blackberry because I had this weird, like, I was, you know, always wanted to. Is like, Blackberry oh. still alive? It, they work on software now, but it's so really sad because it was a Canadian have company. They all. don't, ha- they have like, I, no, they do, they do, but it's like, you know, arguably, you know, they don't. But like, <laughs> um, I remember I was always like, oh, and like, so my version of being, oh, was like, I'm not getting an iPhone. I'm getting this Blackberry. And I remember the first time I like slid it up. It was like such a weird phone. And I like could go on an internet browser on the phone. So it's not like an app. It's like I could open up uh, what it was like the internet. That. Yeah. And then I Googled something. I remember texting my friend Jess. Oh, my God. I just got a smartphone. And then she wrote back kind of like, isn't it amazing? What you can Weird do that you remember, I don't and then remember it's like now I'm like time. that was the beginning of the end for my neurons. <laughs> it's crazy to go through that change. For anyone who listens or watches this pod, we literally lived in a world <laughs> <laughs> the internet. This, we didn't have the internet, and <laughs> then in university lived in a world where we texted by pushing numbers. Yeah, T nine text. I can still do it. It's like still T J L M T J M. Miss you nuts. And now our phones can do. Everything. Everything. Every, everything. <laughs> yeah, we don't even have to use our thumbs to ty- type. We can just be like, hey, Siri, text this person with my voice, and they do it. I like that part, actually. So I think voice commands on cell phones, A, are so bad. They don't understand oh, anything. Oh, don't even bother. But yeah. to me, that's the most interesting area that phones can go because... Wow. <laughs> because... <laughs> The, the way I waste most of my time on cell phones is by going to check the time and getting sucked into my phone. Or oh, like going to I just see. check one thing and then seeing yep. notifications a million other things. True. So I want to just be able to ask or like going to play music on Spotify and seeing text messages yeah, yeah. or them being like, I'm going to go on TikTok. Or being like, I'm going to go open my meditation app and then you're like on Instagram. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I like the idea of just talking what I need or just being like, Hey Google, like, can you do this for me, or can you tell me this, or instead of me having to actually physically use my phone and see things? Okay, well, I, I did not know you were so passionate about the voice. To, <laughs> but I never it's heard so you speak bad. Like that. All of them in the yeah. car, I'll be like asking it to to like play something. Or the other day, I was driving and I didn't want to have to stop and put a new direction, so I was like, add a stop to my directions, and it was just like I cannot do that. I think <laughs> I was so. Like also, that seems pretty basic. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> I've always thought that because you don't do it, I've always thought it was like an algorithm thing, and that the more you do it, the better it got at understanding, and then it starts to work. No, that's what I always thought. Because it's then I'm just not like, that. I ain't putting in the <laughs> really, I ain't putting in the <laughs> effort just, with this relationship. No. I'm not building a relationship. You with You ask phone. it so often, over and over, <laughs> things and you're like, it's getting smarter. No, I, I actually, I actually like genuinely, I from no actual research i've always thought this it's like it's like learning your voice and learning it's your, learning your voice to understand what you're saying and uh, also like, you get better like at words. telling it like what it gets true that's the annoying part when i yeah. start to say i'm like okay how do i have to like say yeah. this it's like add stop on google map <laughs> to gas station like i am like literally it's like trying to uh, we don't understand you because you're saying like one of us <laughs> we need the human and sounding uh, oh, wait so uh, we have to okay we have to get into also like some stats i want to think about this let's jump into some of your research so just to clarify we're going to talk about cell phone addiction we took a bit of a cell phone vacation and so we'll chat a little bit more about that too but let's yeah what are some of your stats let's go there (laughs) oh god okay so it's just like cell phone addiction is like so hard right now to study and i think a lot of scientists and like 
sociologists are freaking out because they're like, it's obviously an addiction, but the way that we understand addiction physiologically for like substance abuse is a lot easier because you can use biochemistry. This is like a very like new technology and also like anyways like we shouldn't even technically maybe be saying addiction according oh, to fair. a lot of studies yeah yeah that it's not I, like, like it's kind of contentious because it's not classified yeah, as the, an addiction the way that drugs or certain substances yeah are. and current research thinks it's important to think of it as a spectrum you're either not addicted to your phone or not right. you're going to be likely falling on the spectrum and they, yeah. they actually think pretty much everyone in the world this is the most significant technological advancement of our time is this smartphone like these yeah. these people are just like and everyone in the world is likely going to be on a scale of this very soon in fact some like it's a like crazy percentage of the world that have smartphones it makes me wonder if something like this cell phone addiction just becomes so ingrained into society that it's not even seen as an addiction, that it's just seen as an essential part of human life. Yeah, and, and I think that's kind of where we're going, but like it's cars. important like, that we have understanding. There might have been a point where like could someone have said like humans have a car addiction, but now it's like yeah. it, do they? Or well, is it just humans do have oh, a car addiction. I mean, it's like on, actually wrong. On that's mass, so funny. But people view yeah. it in such a way where it's just like you just get a car, you use it to get to your job. And don't see it. Obviously, I understand that cell phones are actually mentally way more addicting than cars in terms of their usage patterns. But you know what I mean? Where maybe in 50 years, people will just be like, it's so ingrained in yeah, culture. Because you can't really escape it. Like the way that technology is advancing, we can't. Like we are not, I don't think technology is just going to like go away. And I think that, yeah, that's why I think these this research and this episode is so important because we all have to learn how to have a relationship with our smartphone <laughs> that's not going to make us potentially like the least disturbed or depressed because mm -hmm. I think it does. We now know have the capability. Like we've all switched our minds about technology. At least we have like yeah. in the last like five of it years. Not just being this saving grace like light. Of hope that's, thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it has a lot of caveats that come along with it. So the study that I found was about, it was in India. So India is a really interesting place. So like, 291.6 million smartphone users. That's how many there were in India in 2017. Okay. And they think by next year, there's going to be 490.9 million. Wow. So it's just like, it's doubled. It's still not that much when you think about the whole country. There's, yeah, well, it's still but, like almost half. Yeah, I know. It's like, that's way um, more population. And also, like, yeah, literally more than 10 times the population. <laughs> India. <laughs> India is, oh, I'm like, Canada is so... Small, Small and pointless and weird. <laughs> population. Population wise. wise. But you know what I mean? Like when I'm like, Canada, I'm like, Canada is the <laughs> world. And then I like read about the population of India and I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Gorgeous country. Anyway, so it's, <laughs> it's based in India and they like, they essentially like screened them to figure out who was addicted, who was not addicted, like based on their cell phone use. Just so people know, people with smartphones, the average use is three hours a day, which seems like a lot. Wait. That's the average. So it seems like not a lot. I know, me. but then it's like, it's, but it still seems like a lot. <laughs> like, you say it out I loud. think I use mine more than that. Well, we're probably more addicted. So they put them on a sliding scale of addiction to non-addiction, and then they just ask them a bunch of questions about their life. Okay. And it was really interesting. But when it comes to addiction, these are the things that we should look out for. And one's called salience. This occurs when smartphone use becomes the single most important activity in the person's life and dominates their thinking, feelings, and behavior. And I was uh, like, I kind of think that's ooh, us. Yeah, because it, it's like social media becomes a second life. And I do wake up and go on my own. You know what I mean? Okay, so, oh my God, phone out of the room. Okay, mood modification. <laughs> this refers to the subjective experiences that people report as a consequence of using their smartphone Smartphone. Smurfer. Smurfer. Can we start calling that? <laughs> can I get my smartphone? <laughs> and can be used as a coping strategy. So like the buzz, the high, the escape that you mm -hmm. feel. I'm like, that's what I'm doing on my own on yes. Instagram. Tolerance. This requires that you need more and more time on your phone to get the same mood modifying effects. And then there are withdrawal symptoms. And so we should talk about if we thought we had any of those when we took our cell phone mm -hmm. vacation. But it was like feeling tired which we did wait that's a <laughs> yes. symptom feeling tired um shakes <laughs> moodiness irritability <laughs> and just overall unpleasant feeling states and i, I mean that's like, very we broad. were so tired and i actually <laughs> when i was like on the 10 day like vacation was like it's because if i was this tired i'd go on my phone and that's i would true. start to feel the physiological effects and excitement fomo right. anxiety it like but also yeah. good things and then you're awake <laughs> 
That's true. So <laughs> on our oh. phone vacation, we were also at um, a cottage and by a lake and just relaxing. So part of me was like, you know, we're much more relaxed. Than yeah, my mom was like, time. it's the fresh water. Yeah, fresh the fresh air. air. <laughs> the fresh water. Oh, yeah, the fresh air. So I think that's partially that's true, true, but you're right. I think as soon as we got home and I used my phone, I realized it gets me through my tired points of the day. So when I would naturally have a slump, or I don't know if naturally is the right word, but when I get tired, I go on my phone and that yeah. perks me up or I just stop thinking about being tired. We were also only reading books. We weren't watching TV. That's another thing. We, smartphones like don't fall. Was like the somewhere. three hours a day is just smartphone use. It does not include television or, wow. or your okay. computer. Which As, is also it's not crazy. all screens. You're just talking about Yeah, but about I'm saying phones. we didn't even have screens. Like it would have been a movie at night could have kept us awake at the cottage. Right. I think. Like yeah, I oh, literally yeah, totally. was like, it's the lack of screens. Entertainment or media. And just, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. It's actually a really cool life. It's why I like camping. because I It was so weird. We were sleeping you, like nine or ten hours a day yeah. and then i was like why am i i so can't nice. even make it to 6 p.m uh, yeah. <laughs> i'm like dude you got relaxed hopefully <laughs> i did but then i was like is something wrong with me <laughs> okay so do you want me to keep going about mine or do you want like well it brought okay me, yeah there was questions. one point in yours that i want to pause and talk about this my study on infants because i okay. feel like it relates and i it feels really applicable to adults as well oh god okay in a way that i think i use my phone so Basically, the study was on the impact of giving toddlers around two years old, I think the majority of them were, okay. uh, smartphone devices or tablets to calm them down when they were like being annoyed oh, or having a tantrum yeah, yeah, yeah. or, you know, parents just yeah. being like, here, this will shut you up. I'm going to give yeah. you this. It, me as device. a parent. Are you kidding? I'm going to be shoving tablets <laughs> around the kids. So okay. Much. Well, bite your tongue because uh, you probably don't want to. <laughs> Basically, they found that re like regulating their emotions with media was problematic because it didn't teach kids how to properly regulate their own emotions. Oh. And so those kids <laughs> then get really irritable. It was associated oh with like the compulsive need to use media to regulate their feelings. Oh, so, yeah. And which I was like, I actually think that happens to hu humans. <laughs> Babies aren't humans. Uh, <laughs> I think it happens to adults as well, where it's like, if I'm anxious, or if I'm stressed, I quickly go to my phone as a regulatory yeah. tool instead of stopping and going, Okay, let's just like address what I'm feeling right so, now. So, okay, so it's like literally <laughs> screen time is affecting infants because they cannot process their emotions because they just get a screen in it and then they start to need the screen. As opposed to them oh, having a tantrum God. and a parent yeah. like, you know, sitting yeah. down with them and talking yeah. through their feelings and, and not saying... Being like, oh, let's read a picture book. Literally. <laughs> or oh. that's that's good. It's like, I think the study was trying to differentiate just distracting their brains yeah. versus actually teaching them skills. And this yeah. can be for adults as well on how to think yeah. and feel those emotions. Like oh, That is... For adults, that's true. We yeah. need to do that and, too. And it's the reminder that it's okay to have a tantrum it's okay yeah. to have bad feelings you can't avoid those yeah. so where do you go when you have those feelings well, everyone Turn probably in. goes on their phone yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean i'm like we're retraining ourselves i know um and uh, so yeah it was like the kids would have way more negative emotions when their stuff was taken away from them when their media was taken away so i just thought that related because you said something about it in in your study that there's something like about like like, like we do this that like that's so interesting there's something about like almost media because I don't have kids but there's always like a plot line in a show where it's like well we're trying to get his screen time down <laughs> like you know what I mean like they're always like and I'm always like that's so like dumb but I'm like oh they're probably just like reading this research like they're like right, it's yeah, always yeah. like it's kind of like a waspy <laughs> mom being like uh, screens down John and it's like you're kind of like eye roll but it's like oh they're probably no, just basing that on like that's a real actually, like, and real also issue. as a parent I, I even see you know my sister as a parent of a young two young kids now and being like yeah it, it's obviously so addicted and it's so easy to give that but they have to be like okay you have to stop using it now you've been using it for too long and because we grew up in a generation where we didn't have those things, I think the stark contrast of being like, why, why don't you want to go play outside? Yeah. Like makes our, our generation and older, I think more notice it more. Okay. So this is going back to my study. It's kind of linking back in this really interesting way. So when they divided everyone up from addicted to non-addicted mm -hmm. and they started asking them these questions, they kind of found four umbrella things that the study ends up being about. And one is literally that like, what the cell phone does for the person and people who are addicted, everyone who was fully like by their definition addicted said that the phone like made their life better in some way. It was a way that like they were able to like be happier. Whereas the non-addicted ones were irritated by their phone. 
were irritated when their phone was around. Can you repeat that to me? Sorry, I feel like I, I just want, I want to hear it again. So it's like people who are not addicted to their phone. Yes. I'm just going to say it the other way were irritated by their phone being around them and they found the phone as like a burden on their life that they yes. were just like they probably felt like they had to use yeah whereas people who are addicted were like this phone Thought i love this phone it makes my life better it makes me and i'm like so i kind of think what i love feel okay i kind of think deep down it's like oh i love my phone like i love my phone i like wake up beside it i go in all the time blah blah, blah. but intellectually when someone tells me i'm like oh, i hate my right. phone right but you're like but you like, have a positive and i think if i was on it. like a survey i'd be like oh i actually really enjoy that it like gets me from a to b i love going on it like i love it That's i love so spotify I, I love hate podcasts i absolutely oh my god my so phone. you're like you have it in you to be not addicked uh, well i think i, think I am more less than me. addicted you are less addicted than me <laughs> that's true and i think i'm less addicted than than like lots of people we know but I still, Mitch, that's to so that degree, I, I look at it. I despise the fact that I compulsively need it near me. I try sometimes to purposely leave it upstairs or yeah. whatever, but then I have like I still have those compulsions where I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna carry it around with me. Yeah, and that goes back to that speech thing, like uh, being able to talk to your phone. So many things I actually do appreciate and like are on my phone. That yeah, I then yeah. resent that it sucks that it me to things. Yeah. So like okay, wow. I enjoy listening to podcasts or music or it's having like, could, them, I, could they or, not just come through like a radio? Yeah, or yeah. like um I don't know. There's no, so I know many things. Mean, like it yeah. has a calculator, it yeah. has a translator, it has like, a, like I wish I could go to, on a run and listen to music without having to have your my phone. phone. Yeah. I guess I just need like an old iPod. <laughs> that but there's so a like, disc man. I also like record um music notes on my phone. Yeah. Like for myself. Or I record You just need to carry a microphone with everyone at all times. There's so many devices. <laughs> so that's yeah. why I resent it because I yeah. I am like I like to have it near me for those benefits, but it always sucks me in if I have it near me. You know what? And for both, whether you're addicted or not addicted, it's said that they all use it as an escape. They all use it to alleviate boredom, mm -hmm. and they all use it to modify their mood moods through listening to music applications and videos. So it's like you actually mm -hmm. still are like I have to still do it, and I still it use that. it to alleviate. Yeah, you still, that's I, true. You know, you still do that, and like oh, everyone does. Oh, 100 percent. That's why I don't like it because I know it's like fulfilling that brief moment of boredom that brief moment of anxiety is just like okay i can't live in that okay also there's a Disgusting. direct <laughs> link to fear of missing out and being addicted to your phone which i have fomo well, so people who are addicted are more likely to have FOMO. literally so on the addicted side of the study they find out that these people like through other questions have fear of missing out and their phone when they don't have it they become irritated because of their fear of missing out and knowing that something's going on that they're missing wow. out on whereas non-addicted people are less likely to have fomo so can i give you a different perspective on that even? yeah As please who doesn't have crazy fomo or crazy phone addiction the other day so i i haven't like posted on instagram in a few years but i go on it occasionally because of asap science and then sometimes he's I'll, buddhist sometimes okay. i'll check it but the other day i checked it and i got crazy fomo because you know the world's kind of yeah. or at least in canada people have been able to Starting enjoy to their up. summers yeah oh you brought, you, I, you brought up that fomo on monday you were like i was gave me yeah. so much anxiety and so huh. related to what you said sometimes i think it's not that people it's like you might get FOMO because you use your phone yeah, so much. Yeah, yeah. Because you're suddenly aware. Like, there's a lot of times I just live my life, and if I'm not using Instagram in particular, I just don't know what my friends are doing unless I'm talking to them. But it's like yeah. when you find out people are doing something and you yeah. have no idea it's and like you're seeing natural. videos, yeah, you get yeah. it's that jealousy or being like, oh, was I not invited? Or yeah. should I have gone today because I didn't know it was going to be so fun or those kind of things. Um, I hate that feeling and I had yeah. it when I went on Instagram the other day and was just like oh my god everyone's doing all these things and I decided like I had gone to visit my family which I was really happy about but then suddenly I was like wait is everyone having fun there and I should have gone yeah. a different weekend home yeah. to visit my family like it just makes you question so many things that I did not I like I feel that. like that I feel like my pandemic journey has helped me so like the one of my main takeaways from everything is like learning like I'm, I feel like I've gotten the best I ever have with FOMO, mm -hmm. and I feel like the pandemic it was like learning. Is that because you didn't have to have FOMO? <laughs> like, okay, at first I was like, the pandemic is sick. Like, no FOMO. Like, my friends doing it without me, they will die. And so that felt really good at first. But no, I was. It was more me building hobbies and like independent learning about myself independently, and the mm. deep immense joy that I get from that. That is like not to say like it's it's like a joy I never knew I could get that's and, nice yeah no it's really helps because then it's like i actually need this alone time i need that type of joy in my life but before i was so caught up in fomo it's almost like i, I 
never let myself like learn that stuff. And the pandemic is like so extreme mm-hmm. that I had to do these like things. Like the other end of it. And yeah. now I'm so happy. Like, and obviously like that's just one of the positives of the FOMO. And now I'm just like, I hope it bleeds into me using my phone less. <laughs> Cause it's <then laughs> like, if they're linked, I'm like, I'm like, I hope I can like wean them both. Yeah. Like wean them both away just a bit, you know? Cause I also, balance. yeah, the pandemic in that way was kind of nice to not have to worry about that that aspect of FOMO. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like yeah. everyone's at home. I don't have to feel. And I remember having that in other times, like when there's like blackouts and you lose power for two days and you're just like, Oh, it's kind of nice that I don't have to stress about the things. Cause everyone has, does not have like, other than like, those are gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. Other than like the essentials of life, you, you realize those other things don't matter, especially when no one else is using them. Um, so did you feel these things on our cell phone vacation? Um, yeah. Okay. So, I don't think, okay, I had done a pretty good job with my FOMO. Like, that's what I've been working on a lot. So I really didn't have very much FOMO. But also the fact that I wasn't on my phone, there was no way to really experience that. Like, the only FOMO I could have is like, mm, Mitch is kayaking and I want right. to. Or something like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Which never happened. That never happened. Yeah. That's, that's true. No, but it's never. like, you know what I mean? Like, the concept of FOMO is so interesting when you're just like, out of There's cottage no way family. I could ever go kayaking and you choose not to kayak. Yeah, no. Actually, we've had like literal <laughs> fights where I'm like, you don't kayak with me. <laughs> but anyway, that was, just, that was just like my fantasy. <laughs> but, That's your fantasy FOMO. Yeah, my fantasy FOMO. Oh my God. So like, yeah, I didn't, um, I didn't really feel that much FOMO. I definitely was tired a lot, but I actually loved the cell phone vacation. I thought actually that it was going to teach me more when I came back to not use it. But when I came back, I went on like a cell phone bender. Yeah. Like it was wild to knock off, have zero TikTok to TikTok. I was just like, my brain was like, <laughs> I was just, and I was objectively like, this is so fucked, mm-hmm. but I'm so happy right now. Like it was like a slot machine going off. I was just like, yeah, yeah. Right, you can't stop I just it, kind of was like, lost, it's like, like woke up hungover. It was like last night was <laughs> wild from the scrolling. And I actually was like fun. I partied. It, like it was like I agree yeah. I feel like our cell phone vacation was a little bit cheating because we were in an area A that we already associate without cell phones because it doesn't really have a reception yeah and we also had so, so many activities too yeah and it's easy to let go of something when you actually even if we turned it on oh I see it didn't even work it couldn't really yeah. work very fast okay but f- like let's be real here like other years like for sure it's like oh, let's not use our phones I go up to go on a That's run true. I get on LTE and I'm and, li- check and I check yeah. but this year I went up there to where I could get on LTE and, and I did not press the button yeah. and I was free when I tell you that I I think it's nice for Actually, sure and it, I don't think I know. I'm like, was I free? <laughs> no, I think I know. Like, we, were I don't free. Know. we were free. We and were free. I, but I think <laughs> it's important to view it as a balance like yeah. this in that it's okay to come back and use your phone again. Yeah. It's just nice to remind yourself every now and then of what it's like to not to not. Be using but it. I do think that the extreme of going off mm-hmm. to coming back to coming extreme. back, nothing really changed in my life that much. Whereas lo- like I think it was last August, we did a similar thing. We went to an island. And we went to a cottage and we had our phone from four till five. And that was it. Right. Yeah. And that taught me more tangibly. I mm-hmm. felt when I got back, I feel like I kept up habits of mm-hmm. like hours in the day. And it was like actually practical. Whereas when we were off fully, it's right. such a more visceral You're experience. Just so that when I got back, from... I just was like, ah, yeah, <laughs> like, it was weird. Like, well, it goes I, to I, show I was just back. that maybe managing like, maybe cutting it out completely is just not realistic because yeah, exactly. we live in a yeah. society that you're always going to have to interact with your phone especially we work on the internet you can't avoid it yeah and it's about and most people can't because that's how you communicate that's where all your there's so many things on a phone beyond just the social media um I think that's fascinating to think about that. You're right. I actually think the regulation of here's my window where I can yeah. use it was a not necessarily a better experience but a more useful life lesson of yeah. oh I can get I can do what that. I need and I got it. everything I need. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not worried about like, I don't even, even like FOMO, it probably helps you deal with FOMO better because you're practicing. Yeah. You're there and maybe you're, you're seeing something, but yeah. then you're like, no, I'm dealing with this. Whereas like when you cut it full turkey, you have zero FOMO for 10 days, you come back and maybe it's like more extreme. Yep. That's interesting. I actually think for me, obviously, and anyone on this freaking earth it's like <laughs> regulating it because like you need it yeah it's like i I've said this probably on the podcast before but <laughs> phone is chips phone and it's is like chips. if i have access to chips all the time 
I yeah, will eat those actually chips. always Especially eat them. if they're a New Brunswick covered bridge brand. Have you had those? Oh, is, that, is it New Brunswick? It's from New Brunswick covered potatoes. Bridge, most Delicious. amazing chips. Like, can we get a sponsorship? Although once we did have a bunk bag that didn't have oh, any sauce yeah. on it. Oh, yeah. That happens every yeah. every brand. Every now and then you're like, where's the powder? But also, it's Bong Han. Like, Bong Han, we won't talk about the weird ashy flavored chips that we had that one time. Wait, what? Do you remember the chips that tasted really like ash? Oh, was it one flavor, you mean? It, there was no flavor oh. on it. it was <laughs> we were like, burnt something's to a crisp. Um, <laughs> But that anyway. was the, that shows you that it's a local small batch bag. Yeah, you know? you're like, okay, this is that's, that's probably part of the gamble. Where yeah, you're like I got a good batch. Yeah, got Lay's one. like that is some horrifying factory work there that they're all like, hello, pristine I little chip. Don't like Lay's. Yeah, me neither. It reminds me of Big Pharma. Okay, <laughs> 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 it's Big Chip. Okay, so Lay's big is chip. Big Chip. So my point Lay's was, is Amazon Lay's is chip. Big Chip. Lay's is big chip. Exactly. What's That's why I'm like covered I bridge is small. Covered chip. <laughs> covered bridge is, is 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 like medium chip. I have no a idea. A small what chip is like your neighbor who like fried a potato. Yeah, homemade no, chip. Small chip is the spun ones that you got at like a fair. Like from the oh, truck. Oh, that like when they deep fry potato. it, and then you're like, I saw that potato, and I saw you. And Nick, here's my money. <laughs> that's some local chip. Yeah, but then that local chip is like ten dollars. Yeah, that's true. But you're having and you're vomiting it because you just went on like a spinny ride. Uh, I'll I'll just say I do think it's fun to have chips. It's nice to have chips, <laughs> but you got to regulate it. Yeah, but this also yeah. really relates to my other study about teens, which again I think relates to adults. So I'm gonna bring it up. If that's oh okay. my god! Okay, I didn't even know you had another so, shit. Uh, there, this study was looking at the mental health specifically in teens, and they studied more than half a million teens in 47 countries. So just there's a overall mental country. health or their mental health in phones? Just overall mental oh, health. Oh, screens. The impact of screens on mental health. Okay, the impact Sorry. of screens. Okay. Sorry. I just thought that was obvious. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Maybe it was. <laughs> um, so, interestingly, talking about that time we went on a cell phone vacation but allowed ourselves one hour, this study found that there were some benefits during the first hour of daily screen use. Oh. But detrimental effects of recreational screen use on mental well being kicked in after 75 minutes in girls and 105 minutes in boys. 105 minutes of using it that day. Yes. When you go over that, it starts to go. Oh that. my God. So they were Set like, a timer, folks. Literally. 105 minutes, if boy. So it, Gender's a construct, too, though. True. So, so obviously, that was just fault. a their scale. Um, but it was interesting to me that they were like, there was actually a benefit. So wow. having that first hour probably allowed them to connect with friends, feel okay. like they were keeping up to date okay. on things. But An hour. after a certain point, it was linked to depression, obesity, mm, poor yeah. quality of life, yeah. unhealthy diet, and decreased phys yeah. physical and cognitive abilities. There's nothing good when it's been 75 minutes and I've just been on TikTok. <laughs> like literally being like entertained by like a bird that flies into a window or something. Yeah. It's like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Yeah. So, okay. So like, it's like regulating it. But one thing I was thinking was like, what uh, does scare me this week is when you wake up and you literally like roll over in the morning and then you get your phone. Yeah. Like the first thing in the morning so thing scares me. That's but you're saying resentment. that that's the benefit. Oh, sorry. But did they mean first thing in the morning? Because there's something no, in the morning that I'm like, they no. Didn't say, I didn't say first thing in the morning. Oh, I, th I for some reason thought that it was like one hour, the no, first one hour. No, it just said, sorry, that is what they oh, meant. Oh, but it could be any time of day. Yeah, they didn't mean the first hour of waking. They meant oh, the okay, first right hour of phone use. So one hour, you could do 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there, okay. or a whole hour at once. They just found one hour of use of day was actually a positive okay effect. cool sorry because i was like get that shit out of your room don't don't yeah, wake up and kiss your different. phone kiss your partner your dog your cat <laughs> this before is your why phone. i resent my phone because i use it as an alarm so i'm yeah. like i need it here yeah oh but i have then, an alarm clock i did that i know i got Wait, one where's your you, alarm you were always like it sounds so annoying beep 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 beep, beep <laughs> and you have to click it click it click it <laughs> and you got made me feel so insecure about my little alarm no i, I did, stopped okay, using yeah. it. okay and then i was like i'm I, getting blamed for you not using your alarm really greg's fault i'm addicted to my cell phone but also, I really wanted <laughs> the radio, and it was just, I, oh, okay, this is not stupid and pathetic, but all radio clocks are ugly. I'm sorry. I looked high and low, could not find a nice-looking radio clock. They all look like they were made in the 80s. Well, then, yeah, I know what you mean. It's like, I, it's so like you wake up and slash if it's made, in a movie. There's no such thing as a mid-century modern clock, okay? <laughs> but, Mitch, there has to be. I looked. Okay. I, I what hate. What about the one I I literally bought a cute one. It's but then, not a radio I, clock. No. Wait, you need a radio clock? I want a radio on? clock. Oh, sorry. That's what I'm saying. I, I hate beep, 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 beep. <laughs> okay. Mitch also, I was like, look at this cute alarm clock I got so I don't wake up with my phone. He was like, yeah, I saw that one. Mm, didn't buy it. I <laughs> you were literally like, yeah, I saw that one, but like, that's ugly. Well, I was like, okay. I don't know why. I just, they either have this like, like the, the two kinds of alarm clocks are 
futuristic, plastic, shiny, whatever. It looks whatever. Yours is actually pretty cute, but it's just analog. And I was like, <laughs> I want a radio clock. But all of them are either like this retro wood, which is not the good kind of retro. It's like the perfectly okay, bad wow. time when they were building like cement buildings okay. everywhere. Yeah, like brutalism yeah, or whatever. And it's, they're just hideous. Okay. Or they're like very iPhone <laughs> mac like sleek, but yeah. not in a nice way. In yeah, a way okay. that looks like cheap plastic. No, so I know what you mean. If Whoa. anyone out there has a recommendation for wow. a radio <laughs> clock, think about, okay, I bought... a. That led me onto the journey of buying our little radio. Which is gorgeous. Exactly. It's but not it's an not alarm. an alarm. Oh, yeah. When you told me that, I was like, that seems weird. You that cannot seems... find yeah, no, that's so weird. a radio alarm <laughs> that looks like a nice, cute little, like, okay. vintage wooden little. We need to help phone. get Mitch off his phone. And I am not kidding. Someone send him a radio, radio alarm, alarm clock, clock that that's is beautiful. not from the 70s. And I will pay a good reason. amount of money for it. And not modern in a bad way. Okay. Yeah, it's like it just so needs to be nice. I don't know where I was Make going one, with this. Huh? Oh, this was all about it being stuck near me, resenting. I'm going to go back to my study just okay. to finish it off. So the one hour was good. Beyond that, it started getting iffy. Um, <laughs> and ultimately, they found one hour of physical activity and no more than two hours of screen time a day provided optimal well mental well-being in teens. Write that shit down, people. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! And surely that so must one be the hour same of exercise, adults. and then like around an hour and a half of my phone. I can do that. Well, you would have to regulate it. Then. Oh god! Set the hey Siri, put an alarm for an hour and a half. Oh, is she gonna do it? No, are you <laughs> kidding? Siri doesn't know me. Ah! <laughs> she knows. Ah! She knows. You. She did it! Oh my, <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Why are you so surprised? I I thought I did never use Siri. I thought off. I thought off. I thought <laughs> Siri was off because I was like, wait, I don't want you. Oh God, I hate that. I that shit scares that, me. I love that in 2021, you didn't know saying "Hey Siri" <laughs> would literally make her do that. I don't. I don't play with Siri. I do not play with Siri. <laughs> I like thought I had made Siri off on everything. That's why that's. But you me. do play with Google, and you're always like, "Hey Google, what's the temperature today?" And then it does, and you're like, "Hey Google, what's the temperature tomorrow?" <laughs> like I always hear you going, and then you'll be like, "No, Google, what's the?" Oh God, my Google's going off now. <laughs> 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 oh uh, my god i hate this prison <laughs> this is a hell we are in a cell phone hell we're trying to get off of our cell phones and by doing so they're talking to us I like that's actually horrifying <laughs> like we can't i literally am like trying to get my cell phone and your off. siri went off here and in the bedroom i heard it you have something over I there i don't have a siri in the bedroom <laughs> maybe it's in the bathroom wherever your home. phone is last oh piece of caveat god. for my study the screen time in this was not, it was um, purely entertainment screen time. It wasn't counting school or times when people had oh. to use other devices. Okay, true. Like so your was, job and your emailing all day. Yeah. So, well, this That's was for great. teens. So they were like, yeah. school, or your school screen time was different. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but this was like a personal entertainment yeah. screen time. Yeah. I know when I'm not on my smartphone screen time. I know when I'm like yeah. writing like, like on my laptop. Working. I'm like, yeah, this is not bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Oh my gosh. Awesome. So reach out with more ideas. So upcoming uh, video ideas we've got that are really good is Myers Briggs. Oh yeah. And we're gonna do billionaires. Billionaires. Yes. And uh, we're back. We're back, girl. We're here making podcasts. Let us know what you want to hear us ramble about. What's going on? We'll find some science about it. And oh my god, I'm doing the announcer voice. Yeah, why does it's this so happen weird, Mitch. Like, I don't know why. Like it's so funny. I'm like, what is he doing? Because okay. I'm, I'm just like not speaking from the heart. I yeah, guess. no, and it's okay. <laughs> so yeah, this, for more announcer voice, you'll hear it at the beginning and the end of every pod. You're doing Subscribe. it. Subscribe. Shut up, now. Okay, we're gone. We're gone. We're gone. Okay, bye.